2012 was a momentous year for me. This marks the 10th year since I got into the amazing world of anime and manga. Like many, it started with Dragon Ball Z, but it quickly moved on to bigger and better things. To mark this anniversary, every month in 2012, I'm going to be looking back at shows that are also celebrating their 10th year of existence, just in case you never had a chance to watch them. I'll warn you ahead of time that these videos will have spoilers with a capital S, so if you want to remain cherry, I'll let you know when to stop watching. The first show I'll be highlighting is Bandai's Police Teacher. Known as Onegai Teacher in Japan, it ran from January 10th through March 28th of 2002. Written by Yosuke Kuroda, the same guy who brought you Gundam 00, Trigon, Honey and Clover, High School of the Dead, and Excel Saga, Police Teacher is a love story set in a small town in Nagano. It follows the relationship of Kei Kusanagi, a high school boy suffering from a socially debilitating disease, and Mizuho Kazami, a half-alien sent to Earth to observe the local populace. Due to several fateful meetings and Mizuho's desire to learn more about Earth, the two are forced to pretend that they are married and keep their relationship a secret from the high school where Mizuho is stationed. As they learn more about each other while dealing with their differences, they overcome their unique circumstances and eventually find that they've fallen for each other. And now on to spoiler land. Kei suffers from an unknown ailment that puts him in a death-like state. While he's in this standstill, he is unaware of what's going on around him and he doesn't age. The series begins shortly after he's recovered from a three-year standstill and after he's moved into a new town with his uncle Minoru. While contemplating the difficulties of his condition at the side of a lake one evening, a whirlpool disturbs the quiet waters. A couple seconds later, a beautiful redhead materializes nearby. Obviously disturbed, Kei scrambles away and falls into the lake. Jumping to the next day, we're introduced to Kei's friends, Hyosuke, Kaede, Herikawa, Ichigo, and... Oh, what was his name? Oh, right, uh, Matagu. Yeah, he doesn't really leave much of an impression. Hyosuke bursts in the classroom and tells everybody that they have a new homeroom teacher and that she's a hell of a looker. As it turns out, the gorgeous new homeroom teacher is none other than the alien from the previous evening. When Kei gets home, he sees that his homeroom teacher also happens to be moving in next door to his uncle's clinic. After helping her move her things in, Kei has another one of his standstills in Mizuho's apartment. When he wakes up, their resulting conversation confirms that she is indeed an alien here to observe humanity. While trying to escape, Mizuho teleports him onto her spaceship. She tries to clumsily seduce him, but she only succeeds in freaking him out more than convincing him to stay quiet. Kei somehow makes it onto the bridge of the ship and damages Marie, Mizuho's living interface. This causes the hidden ship to expose itself and take off. After some interesting hijinks, the two eventually get the ship hidden again, but not before the busted Marie teleports Kei to another dimension that happens to be getting sucked into a black hole. Mizuho swoops in and saves Kei, but unfortunately, Marie gets the returning coordinates wrong and dunks the two in Minoru's tub while he's right outside. Kei and Mizuho try to explain how and why they ended up in the tub. Being the decent guy that he is, Kei keeps Mizuho's origin a secret. The next day, Mizuho teleports Kei to the equipment room so the two can talk a bit more. She tells him more about her job as a galactic observer and reveals that she's only half-alien, as her father was an astronaut thought lost years prior to the start of the series. After some students come in and interrupt their little talk, Marie unfortunately teleports in and gets them stuck. By the time evening hits, the two have talked enough where Kay opens up to her and tells her about his standstills. Touched by the level of trust he's placed in her, Mizuhu goes in for a kiss. Before they can touch lips, the doors open up and in pops Minoru, with the school principal behind them. The group goes to the principal's office to try and figure out how to explain their little predicament. Minoru floats the idea that Kei and Mizuho are married and that it was a coincidence that she ended up in that school. The principal doesn't buy it, but 
K finally mans up enough and reveals that he's actually 18 and describes the nature of his disease. With that little fib, K has saved Mizuho from being removed as a teacher and an observer, but now they have to live life like a married couple. Of course, this is only the beginning of the antics. Romantic comedies with situations similar to Police Teacher are a dime a dozen. What really separates this show from the rest is the emphasis on Kay and Mizuho's relationship. Sure, there are plenty of laughs to be had at their expense while they hide the nature and the existence of their relationship, but behind those gags is a relationship that I can believe in. Many rom-coms fail to make their main couple look like they care for one another, and when they do eventually fall in love, it feels forced and fake. What Police Teacher did right was show that these two are genuinely attracted to each other. The whole time that the two are in the same situations, you can see that they are starting to really dig each other. The level of trust they place in one another, while a bit premature considering the heft of the secrets that they both have, is indicative of people who view each other as more than just mere acquaintances. The more time that Kay and Mizuho spend together, the more you see that their love is blossoming. They also go out of their way to work, try and work their way through the problems that they're facing. They both admit when they're at fault, and they swallow their pride when they need to. Most shows would have had them be stiff-necked and refuse to admit when they're wrong, but instead, Kurada understands that a relationship has to be worked on and nurtured, no matter how fast the initial attraction was in the beginning of the relationship. And there's a lot for them to work through. The two of them can be extremely immature, with plenty of small arguments and fights dotting the show. However, none of these fights are particularly uncalled for. The show goes out of its way to mention that they're both very inexperienced with love and have considerable hurdles to leap within themselves. Mizuhu has to keep her relationship a secret or she'll lose her job and subsequently her position as an observer on Earth, and Kay has to pretend that he is a nuts about the hot red-headed teacher while his friends go out of their way to hook him up with Hedikawa. That definitely causes a fair amount of jealousy in Mizuho, mostly because their relationship is easier and socially makes more sense for Kay. It also doesn't help that Kay is a bundle of complexes. This guy was stuck in a super coma for three years and felt like he had to start his life all over again in a completely different town. On top of that, he's always waiting for the next standstill to hit, afraid that any change in his emotional state will set him off. Clearly, the guy has some issues to work through. Later, you see that this all started with the suicide of his older sister, so it's not like he doesn't have a reason to have, you know, a problem or two without any other factors coming in from the outside. Speaking of outside factors, Kay's friends are the cause of most of his problems throughout the series. Though a well-meaning group of kids, their blundering and interference makes Kay's life infinitely more complicated. Let's start with Kay's closest friend, Yosuke. Being quite the loudmouth, his understandable insistence in hanging around Mizuho means that Kay has to play the role of a normal high school student more often than the role of a husband. Mataku? Well, he doesn't do much of anything, really. He's just there to act as a foil to Kay and Yosuke. He stays the same old dork while the other two grow and move on to bigger and better things. On her own, Kaede doesn't cause K any trouble. However, due to the manipulations of Ichigo, she is the first in the series to confess and consummate her love to Hyosuke. The fact that their relationship moves so quickly and ends up working out by the end of the series has a big impact on Herikawa. Poor, poor Herikawa. She's intelligent, athletic, cute, and is completely hooked on K. In any other show, she'd be at the top of the list of characters that the main guy would want to end up with. Unfortunately, she doesn't stand a chance when placed against Mizuho. What's kind of sad and funny is that she knows that, that she's a catch and she really just can't understand why Kay is playing hard to get. It's made all the worse when she finally confesses to Kay, and she handles it so well. Hell, they both handle it better than a lot of adults would have. It's just that you know that Kay's heart belongs to the half-alien waiting for him at home. Finally, let's talk about Ichigo. This little gal is the one behind Kaede and Herikawa, pushing them toward their crushes. While it seems like she's doing it for her own amusement, she's actually doing it so that they can be happy. You see, she shares the standstills that Kei suffers from. She also had an extended stop in her life, but instead of three years, it was six. 
Imagine being a 21-year-old stuck in a 15-year-old body. For her, the last vestige of happiness are her friends, and she'd do anything to make them happy. In fact, it's the only thing keeping her from relapsing. To prevent another relapse from happening, Kei decides to break up with Mizuho and hook up with Harikawa. Yep, it's pretty stupid, and causes an enormous amount of wangs for everybody involved. Only by breaking up do Mizuho and Kei finally understand that they're deeply in love with each other. Kei, well, he can't keep up the charade with Harikawa, which kind of makes Ichigo come out and tell her about her condition and what she's been doing, and obviously Harikawa isn't exactly pleased with being manipulated. And the stress of all this stupidity puts Kei into another standstill. Don't worry, though. Despite being called back to the Galactic Council, court-martialed for interfering with primitive species, having her existence removed from the memories of everybody she met, and being forced to sneak back to Earth, things work out for the lovebirds, and they get a second chance for the relationship to grow. Now that you know the story, let's move on to some of the technical aspects of Police Teacher. The soundtrack was done by Ive, the music juggernaut behind artists like Kotoko, Lia, Aiko Shimamiya, Mel, and so on. If you've been watching anime for the last couple of years, you've probably at least heard one or two tracks from these guys. For Police Teacher, they crafted a wonderfully evocative set of tracks that has stuck with me for years. Yeah, the silly and whimsical tracks are pretty standard fare, but their serious and emotional tracks are some of my favorite songs on any anime soundtrack. On top of that, the opening song, Shooting Star, by Kotoko, remains my favorite anime opening from any show that I've seen. Ever. The music, lyrics, beat, melody, everything sets the tone for Please Teacher perfectly. I can still listen to that song years later and get the same warm, happy feeling that it gave me the first time I saw it. In terms of vocal performance, most of the actors are alright. However, Soichiro Hoshi's K and Kikuko Inoue's Mizuho are good enough to elevate the show up several notches. Hoshi gives K a profound melancholy that is only cracked when he meets his future wife. Yeah, he makes him sound excessively weak at times, but it isn't enough to ruin the overall performance. The perpetually 17-year-old Inoue is a personal favorite of mine, and she is great as Mizuho here. She plays her with a certain petulance that is vital in establishing Mizuho's character. A lot of other voice actresses would have made her sound annoying and whiny, but Inoue balances the childishness with simple inexperience. I honestly believe the show would not have worked without her. As for the dub, well, I'm generally not a fan of them. Even if you do like dubs, I really feel that Police Teachers is a particularly bad one. Here, have a listen. <laughs> Yeah, same with me. Last night. Did you look at my breast when we were in the bathtub last night? Um, uh, I am, uh... You looked. I, uh... Just, just a little bit. I'll leave it up to you to decide how you feel about it. But I'm definitely of the mind that the Japanese performances are better. Way better. Anyway. Uh, there are a couple of problems with Police Teacher. It isn't perfect. Uh, for me, the biggest aggravation comes at the odd spikes in Kei and Mizuho's relationship. There are times when Kurada seems to just randomly toss in problems just for the sake of conflict. And considering how well he built their, the foundation of their relationship, it feels way out of place and really forced when Kei starts spazzing out and pushing her away. I mean, there's all, and on top of that, there's also Mizuho's annoying mother and sister. They do nothing except aggravate me, and they really add little to the overall product. The only story bit that they actually help in adding in is that they say that Kei kind of looks like Mizuho's father. Oh, and Mizuho's mother is uh, pretty hot, so if uh, that's what Kei has to look forward to in the future, he's uh, quite a lucky dude. They return in the OVA episode set after the end of the series. And it's also another one of my gripes. It's a silly closing episode that's nice and pervy, and it shows that everything worked out for everyone, but it's kind of strange that it comes after the touching finale. Oh, and uh, Hedekawa ending up uh, banging the teacher? Yeah, that's a little creepy, Bandai. Yeesh. 
Despite these minor flaws, Please Teacher is one of my favorite shows, and one that I revisit every so often. It isn't flashy, it isn't particularly well animated, and the fan service is tame in comparison to modern sensibilities. However, a few shows have been able to move me the way that it can. Kay and Musical's romantic arc, though occasionally aggravating, is one of my favorite love stories. The more experience I gain in life and love, the more I appreciate how Please Teacher makes these people work toward their happiness. Nothing is given here. By the last episode, they've earned what they got. Even if there are conflicts and fights, the experience of love itself is worth working through if you think the person is worth it. If you look for something a bit more modern, the currently running Anonatsu de Materu, otherwise known as Waiting in the Summer, shares many of Police Teacher's technical crew. Based on the first couple of episodes, there are more than a couple of similarities between the two shows. If you dug Police Teacher, I have a feeling that Anonatsu de Materu will be right up your alley. Next month, I'll be bringing in the robots for the mecha classic Full Metal Panic. For Japanator, this is Pedro Cortez.